Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to continue my weekly idea of talking about the tongue and talking from Proverbs. Now, as I said yesterday, I don't have any order to these. I sort of skip around. I mean, yesterday I started out with Proverbs 12, and today I'm going to look at Proverbs 10. So let's see what it says here in Proverbs 10, 18 through 21. Hiding hatred makes you a liar. Slandering others makes you a fool. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. The words of the godly are like sterling seal silver. The heart of a fool is worthless. The words of the godly encourage many. Okay, let's, let's think about this for a minute. It, here we have a couple of ideas put together that don't quite seem to fit. It starts out by saying, hiding hatred makes you a liar. God doesn't want people to hate. It's really simple. He doesn't want us to be envious. He doesn't want us to be unloving. He doesn't want us to be unkind. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't see that in the lives of people who even call themselves Christians. But that's certainly not what he desires. He says here that hiding it really does make you a liar. Now, I... I don't know about you, but for me, in my top category of things, I absolutely do not want to be known for is lying. I, I think a man or a woman's word should count. The Bible certainly says it does, should. I don't want to tell untruths. And I want to make sure that what I am espousing is supported by more than just my opinion. And, and hiding it, as the proverb says here, really does make you a liar. Uh, now, if you've got hatred in your heart and you're hiding it, please don't hang up on the, on the Internet this morning. Let me, let me try to finish. He goes on to say, slander makes you a fool. There's some people who just like to talk about other people. Excuse me. They just like to tell stories about others. I'm not sure why. Um, I've been around a lot of them over the years. And they're not the kind of people you want to stay around. We should say good things about people. We should be concerned about the truth in all of our words and action. But it then goes on to say, too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible. Keep your mouth shut. I, you know, there's a temptation here to say, therefore, you ought to be quiet. And you know that old phrase, you got two ears and one mouth, so you ought to listen twice as much as you talk. Well, that sounds good, but I don't know that it really means anything. But yet, we have to be careful about what we say. Apparently, just rattling off at the mouth is going to get you in trouble. And some people make it worse by keep talking. I remember when when I was being divorced and I got hauled into court one time and my ex-wife's attorney was just accusing me of all kinds of stuff. And I didn't know how the system worked and I stood there and I kept thinking to my attorney, why don't you say something? Aren't you going to defend me? Come on, speak up, will you? She's killing me. And he never uttered a word. And at the end of her tirade, the 
the judge says, well, I'm not going to do anything anymore. You've wasted my time. This hearing's over. And I remember walking out and, and, and my attorney said, you know, John, sometimes you win by not saying anything. And sometimes I think we need to learn that lesson. Sometimes we win by not saying anything. We need to be careful in that regard. And then it gets down to these words. The words of the godly are like sterling, sterling silver. Okay. Two points. One, are you godly? Well, if you're not, you can be. I mean, it doesn't take a graduate degree in godliness to be godly. All you have to do is walk in the ways of the Lord. And if you're not, okay, change them. Walk some other way. And it says that the words of the godly are like sterling silver, meaning they're precious. They're special. They are worth something very valuable. The words of the angry are worth nothing. All they do is make noise. And nobody really wants to listen to them, except others who just want to make noise. Now, granted, the noise can hurt, and, and there'll be an accountability one day for that, but don't you want to be known for someone who, who speaks wisdom than just noise? I do. And then it goes on to this, and, and this is really important. The words of the, God, the godly encourage many. When I die, which is going to happen sometime, hopefully not anytime soon, when I die, I hope people will say that I encouraged others. To me, the greatest gift in the world is for someone to do better than I've done. Now, that doesn't mean I put myself down and I think, well, I haven't done much worthwhile. I think I have. But nobody's going to write a book about me. I don't know why they would. But maybe they'll write a book about someone I could help influence. You see, parents need to encourage their children. Adults need to encourage younger adults. Older folks need to encourage younger folks. And sometimes older folks need to encourage older folks. How do we do that? Well, it says right here, with the words of the godly that are not overspoken and don't come from a heart that's hiding hatred. If you really want to make a difference in your world, and you can, then speak words of encouragement every change you get. I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. What do you think about that? I'll be back tomorrow and have another thought about this. And I hope in the meantime, you have a, a fantastic day. If you have a need or a prayer request or something, just be sure and let us know. We'll do everything we can, as fast as we can, to help you out. So until tomorrow, God bless you. Be safe. I'll talk to you again.